Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome back to another true crime video. So the case that I have for you all today is one that really reminds me of another case that I covered probably over a year ago at this point and that was the case of Elijah Snow. This is yet another case of a young man who dies under suspicious circumstances while just trying to enjoy his vacation with his wife. So I'm really looking forward to hearing what everybody thinks about this case after hearing all of the details. But before I get into it, I wanted to go ahead and say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Pretty Litter. Pretty Litter helps to eliminate cat bathroom smell with their ultra-absorbent crystals that trap odor instantly. Pretty Litter uses a super light crystal base that also helps to minimize the mess and dust. Plus, their crystals last for up to a month, which means less scooping and fewer trips to the garbage can. My favorite thing about Pretty Litter, though, is that it actually changes color to help detect early signs of potential illnesses in our cat, including urinary tract infections and kidney issues. My sister and I use Pretty Litter for her cat, and I really like that we can feel at ease. Pretty Litter ships free across the United States in a small, lightweight bag. It's nice because I know that will never run out, and we don't have a huge container of litter taking up space and stinking up my sister's apartment. Pretty Litter helps keep odors at a minimum. If you want to try out Pretty Litter for yourself, make sure you head to prettylitter.com slash rachelshannon to get 20% off of your first order. Once again, that's prettylitter.com slash rachelshannon for 20% off of your first order of Pretty Litter. Thank you again so much to Pretty Litter for sponsoring today's video. With that being said, let's get into today's case. Today, we are going to be discussing the tragic death of Elliot Blair. Elliot Blair was born on July 18th, 1989 in Long Beach, California to Tom and Stella Blair. Elliot went to Servite High School where he played on the soccer team before graduating in 2007. After high school, Elliot went on to California State University in Fullerton. Here, he earned his bachelor's degree in economics. After this, he went to law school, where he went to Loyola Law School in Los Angeles. He graduated with honors and then got his Juris Doctor degree with a concentration in criminal justice. By 2017, Elliot got his dream job working as a public defender with the Orange County Public Defender's Office. While interning at the Public Defender's Office, Elliot met a woman named Kimberly Williams. She too went on to be hired at the Public Defender's Office for the same role. The two fell in love and they dated for eight years before they got married on January 14th, 2022. After that, the couple purchased their dream home in Orange County, California. Elliot was known to be an extremely accomplished man with many talents, hobbies, and passions. He was always ready for a challenge and would master anything that he tried. In addition to his work as a lawyer, he was also a skilled mechanic. He loved working on cars and engines with his father, Tom, who taught him everything he knew. Together, the two worked on a Volkswagen Beetle and even built a 1996 Blue Baja Bug. He loved being outdoors and going on adventures. He loved off-roading, dirt biking, and camping in the desert. But beyond that, he loved the ocean. He loved going to the beach and participating in water sports. He loved food, especially barbecuing and pizza making. He was also a talented musician, and he would play guitar for Kimberly and sing for her. Elliot was known for being passionate, empathetic, and hardworking at his job as a public defender. He spent weekends and nights talking with clients and working on their cases. He especially had a soft spot for working with juveniles, spending even more extra time with them, and trying to encourage them and mentor them. He was passionate about working to defend people who were being accused of crimes but couldn't afford a lawyer. He was known by his co-workers, friends, and family alike as being giving. He loved helping people. If he wasn't in trial, he was advocating for his clients. Elliot had the same compassion towards people in his own personal life. Elliot's mother went on to describe that his father, Tom, passed away in 2020 and she was having a lot of trouble coping with this loss. 
So, Elliot went out of his way to find her some local support groups where she lived and arranged for her to attend them. She found peace in attending those groups and is so very helpful for Jared helping her cope with this tragic loss. Now, after getting married back in 2022, Elliot and his wife Kimberly spent their honeymoon at the Las Rocas Resort and Spa in Rosarito, which is located in Baja, California in Mexico on the shores of Rosarito Beach, just south of of Tijuana. Friends described that Elliot felt that Baja was his happy place, his safe place. He loved it there. Mexico is where Elliot proposed to Kimberly. It's where he went on his bachelor party, and it's where the couple got married and went on their honeymoon. The resort they went to boasts breathtaking oceanfront views with various resort bars and restaurants and affordable room rates ranging from $100 to $300 per night. So, the week of January 13th, 2020, 23, the couple decided to go back to that same resort to celebrate their one year as a married couple, and they stayed in a room on the third floor of that hotel. On the day of January 13th, this day started as any other on vacation. The two woke up late, they got massages in the morning, and then drank margaritas on the beach as they watched the sunset. The two drove to a local restaurant that was located off of the resort. They had their dinner there and left at around 7 p.m., but as they were driving back to the hotel, they were actually stopped by local police. When they were pulled over, the officers claimed that the couple had driven through a stop sign. During this stop, according to Kimberly, the officer had asked them for some cash. Elliot was fluent in Spanish, so he was able to understand what the cops were asking for and he was able to respond. He had also told Kimberly before that if something were to happen with the police while they were on vacation, to let him handle it. So, he explained to the officer that he did not have the amount of cash that they were asking for. So, the officer apparently asked the couple, you know, what they were doing in Mexico, and he told them that they were on vacation. So, they asked the couple what resort they were staying at, and he told them the Las Rocas Resort where they were on vacation. Kimberly stated that the officers kept asking for money, but Elliot sort of stood his ground. Elliot told the officers that they were both attorneys, so they showed them their work badges. He also told the officers that he's just here on vacation. He doesn't want to cause any trouble, but he also doesn't want to be taken advantage of. He said that he's an attorney, so these cops can take him down to the station where he can pay his ticket with his card and get a receipt but the officer kept demanding cash. Eventually, after some back and forth, the two decided to just empty their wallets of all of the cash that they had, and they ended up giving the officers $160 before the officer said okay, and they were let go. After this whole interaction, which lasted around 10 minutes, Kimberly describes feeling rattled. They were nervous and a bit uneasy because they had never been pulled over before, but at the same time, they were happy that nothing more happened to them. Now, I want to take a moment to talk about my own personal experiences with situations like this one. I live in Arizona, and it's very common that people from Arizona will drive to Mexico, especially to somewhere called Rocky Point. One of the biggest concerns people have when driving through Mexico is of being pulled over and the authorities asking them for money. Before driving down there personally, I did do a bit of research on this, and most sources will say that you do not give the officers cash when they ask for it. But when you're in a situation like this, in a country that is not your own, I can see how scary it can be. I would be terrified if I was in this situation, not knowing what happened if you are pulled over for no reason and extorted like that, which that's pretty much what this is, is extortion. When I was driving only around 15 minutes after crossing the border, I was driving behind a nice BMW with a Michigan license plate. My car, I have a little car, which definitely is not as fancy as that one. I actually have a Ford and it has damage on the back from a fender bender that happened years ago and I just never got it fixed. I think the little dents and there's a little hole in the back, I think it gives it character. But anyways, both cars passed a parked cop and the guy in front of us who, again, we had been driving behind for several miles and I saw no issues with. This guy even stopped for workers on the side of the road to give them some cash. 
but this guy in the BMW, he was pulled over. So I came and went to Mexico unscathed. I actually did get stopped at one point by someone who was like inspecting cars. He asked us if we spoke Spanish. We said no, and he just let us go. So I don't think that that's really anything to be worried about or a story to tell. But I did always just have this uneasy feeling of seeing a guy in a nice car getting pulled over when I personally saw them breaking no traffic rules. Me and this guy in front of us were both, you know, going the speed limit, if not under the speed limit, using our turn signals, doing everything that you should to avoid being pulled over, and he still got pulled over. So, all to say that this is something that happens all of the time. It's really scary to find yourself in this situation and it definitely makes you want to be extra cautious if you're in a country that is known for doing things like this, especially if you have a nicer car, which is also why I pointed out the makes of our cars is because I think that the fact that he drove a BMW and I had a car that had clearly been damaged in an accident showed that this man probably had more money than me. At least that's probably what it seemed like to the police officers. So I think driving a nice car through Mexico can sometimes make you a little bit more of a target. But again, that is all just based on my own personal experience. If you've had a similar situation happen to you, let us know in the comments. Or if you disagree with anything that I said and you see it differently, also let us know. Okay, so now back to the case. Either way, after that happened, the couple went back to their resort where they went to the lobby bar, they got a few drinks, and they danced together for a bit before they went back up and headed to their room at around 11.45 p.m. In the room, Elliot took a shower while Kimberly put her pajamas on, turned the TV on, and laid in bed until she eventually fell asleep. The next thing she knows, about two hours later, she remembered waking up to a security guard and the hotel manager either in her room or just outside of her room. It's been reported differently, but either way, these guys were saying, excuse me, miss, excuse me, is that your boyfriend down there? So she looked over to the side of her bed where her husband should have been and she did not see him in bed. So, she ran out of the front door and saw that the hotel staff were pointing over the side of the front of the hotel on the ground just down the stairs. At that point, that is when she saw that Elliot was laying face down on the ground. He was wearing only a t-shirt and his underwear, with his sweatpants still laying on the bed. He was found laying next to the stairs of the hotel, which led to the parking lot. Immediately, Kimberly started yelling at the hotel staff to call an ambulance, but they told her that an ambulance had already been there an hour ago, and they already declared him as dead. According to later investigation, Elliot had been on his phone and viewed a video on Instagram at around 12.35 a.m., but by 12.50 a.m. on January 14th, a passerby at the resort called the authorities to report that someone had suffered from an apparent fall. Around 20 minutes later, paramedics arrived and they found that Elliot had already been deceased. When police had gotten to the scene, they theorized that Elliot had probably fallen out of the third story hotel balcony, which is located around 20 to 25 feet above the ground. I have also seen that they think that he fell out of an open airway landing. Kimberly said that when she was first notified of Elliot's body, a detective in plain clothes who was wearing a badge went to her and told her that he saw that Elliot had a bullet wound in his head. They immediately asked her if she had any weapons in the room, to which she said no. Then the detective started to say that his death was either a suicide or an accident. He asked Kimberly if the two had been fighting that night, and she said no. The two were celebrating their one-year anniversary of being married, so no, they were not fighting. They were happy. There was no way that Elliot would have purposely taken his own life while on vacation celebrating their marriage. Then they asked Kimberly how much he had drank that night. It could have been an accident where he stumbled and fell because of how intoxicated he was. Kimberly said that throughout the night, he probably only had around five or six drinks over the course of six hours that night. 
but she said that he was not belligerently intoxicated that night, nor had he ever become so intoxicated that he couldn't take care of himself. As someone who is female and probably weighs less than Elliot, both things contribute to having a low tolerance just in general. If I spread out five or six drinks among several hours, like six hours, even if I was on vacation where I was hot and I may be a lot more dehydrated, I will not become so intoxicated after five or six drinks that I'm falling over, not even close, so I don't see how Elliot would have gotten to that point, even if he's not a regular drinker. One drink per hour over several hours typically won't get you that inebriated. Either way, according to Kimberly, during this initial stage, she heard everything under the sun from investigators, including a shooting, suicide, and an accident everything except for the possibility that he was harmed. After his body was found, of course, he was sent in for an autopsy, which was completed by Mexican officials. First, Mexican officials stated that they found no signs of a struggle within the couple's hotel room. Then, on his autopsy, they reported that they found considerable amounts of alcohol in Elliot's system. It's been reported differently depending on what source you look at, but I did see some sources state that his blood alcohol level was 0.1%, which is 0.02% over the legal limit. They also found that his cause of death was from severe head trauma. They found that his cause of death was consistent with a fall that was at the height of the couple's room. They also ruled out traces of violence to his body from a firearm or a sharp instrument. They said that his cause of death appears to be an unfortunate accident from a fall from the third story. They think that the night that this happened, Elliot was getting ready for bed when he heard pigeons being loud outside, and then he went outside to shush the pigeons, and that is when he fell. However, the family questions this finding, saying that they think that Elliot was actually murdered. She said again that there was no way his level of intoxication would cause him to be so drunk that he would fall over the balcony or from the hallway by accident. She said, quote, In my nine years of being with him and knowing him, I can tell you I've never seen him sloppy. I've never seen him not be able to stand. I've not seen him not be able to walk and care for himself. Then it was also reported that Mexican authorities were trying to push Kimberly to get Elliot's body cremated, which obviously she said no to because she wanted her own investigation done. So Kimberly requested that a second independent private autopsy be conducted in the U.S. and by late January, his body was sent back to the U.S. and a second autopsy was started. Now, I do want to mention that before his second autopsy could be done, the family reported that Elliot's body was embalmed before they had the chance to run a toxicology screen to see his blood alcohol level. They said that they embalmed his body after the request for his blood to be drawn was made. I also want to note that even though the initial autopsy found him to have a BAC of 0.1%, which is slightly above the legal limit, a lot of people would argue that this is not enough for someone to be considered belligerently drunk. The family wanted to get their own blood test to refute the claim that Elliot was inebriated on the night of his death but they did not allow that, and instead, they embalmed his body. I will say that according to the U.S. Embassy and consulates in Mexico, they say that embalming must be done within 24 hours of death, but as far as I know, this request was made pretty early on. They could have easily drawn his blood and kept a sample to be tested independently, but this was not done. So, there's no way that they're able to test for themselves that he was or was not that drunk that night. Then, as we know, a second autopsy was requested, and I believe it is currently being done, so it's not completed, but the preliminary findings have been released. The family also hired Dr. Rami Hashish, who is a biomechanical body performance and injury expert, to review the images taken from the original autopsy. So, it was found that Elliot had suffered more than 40 fractures on his skull, most of which were centered in the back of his skull and the left side of his face. As a reminder, Elliot was found laying face down on the ground. Kimberly reports that he was found with the right side of his face lying on the ground. 
So how is it possible that if he died from a head injury from falling, that his injuries were on the left backside of his head, even though he was found laying face down with the right side of his face on the ground? If he died from a fall, you would think that the way he was found would have been how he hit the ground, which in this case probably would have been face up with the back of his head on the ground and the left side of his face on the ground. But again, he was found face down with the right side of his face on the ground. So, once again, if he died from a fall, you would think that that is where his injuries would have been, but they weren't. They also found that he had marks on his knees, which were consistent with road rash, meaning that it was likely caused from his knees being dragged against the ground. Then they found that he had a toe injury, and they also found that he had a large black bruise on his left forearm they think that he most likely was dragged by one or multiple men. They said that the road rash on his knees shows that he may have been dragged. Then the bruise on his forearm can show that he was grabbed and tried fighting off the attacker. They think that he was hit and then was dragged for whatever reason. So, Dr. Michael Baden, a renowned forensic pathologist, reviewed the autopsy done by Mexican authorities and concluded, quote, Based on the materials, it is my opinion that Elliot Blair died of multiple blunt force injuries and that he was murdered after returning to the hotel. Dr. Rami Hashish also said, quote, I think it's relatively clear that the injury patterns just simply don't add up with one another. There's bruising marks on the body. There's indications of potentially being dragged on the ground on the front of the body. There's fractures to the back of the skull. Nothing really points to the fact that this was necessarily an accident. In addition to that, there were reports that stated that there were actually signs of blood found within the room and outside of the room of this hotel. So, this report stated that there were reddish-brownish spots that show splash characteristics consistent with blood found on the internal surface of the bathroom door in the room, on the concrete walls of the hallway, as well as on the concrete floor just outside of the room in the hallway. It's not exactly clear when this blood is from or if it's confirmed to belong to Elliot. It was actually stated that some of this blood is animal blood, which people are not sure what to make of. I did see in one source that the blood outside of the room on the concrete floor did belong to Elliot, but again, that was just in one source, so I can't be 100% sure. Now, going back to how Elliot was found in just his underwear and socks. Kimberly thinks that there is no way that her husband would willingly walk out of the room in only his underwear and t-shirts unless he heard something or someone come to the door that urgently needed his attention. If he was just going to go out there to shush some pigeons, he would have thrown his pants on really quick before he went out there because that's not something that needs to be taken care of immediately. But if someone was, for example, pounding on the door, asking for him to come, he might not think to put his pants on before just running to the door. That is what she thinks based on his own personal behaviors. Again, she just does not think that he would have gone out there pantsless for no reason. So, due to all of this evidence that they have found this far, the family has also hired a private investigator to look further into this case and find more evidence. They want to view surveillance video from that night. They want to read the original Mexican police reports. But as far as I have seen, even the PI said that they have hit a wall. It's very difficult for them to do any more of an investigation with the Mexican authorities just not working with them. The family has said that they just want to figure out what really happened so that their questions can finally be answered and they can finally find peace and move on from this and heal. Kimberly stated, quote, I just know it's not an accident. I know he didn't fall. I just know that. I want to do everything that we can to figure out what happened in that 45 minute hour time span because that's what Elliot deserves and that's the hardest part for me is not knowing. She went on to say, quote, I don't want him to be forgotten. I want the world to know who my Elliot is. I want people to know that he's not some drunk that stumbled off the front edge of our hotel room. I want the world to remember the person he was, his smile, his heart. That's one of the only things keeping me going right now, is the idea of doing this for him, for honoring his name. So, with all of that information, as I stated, there may be a lot more to this case than just a tragic accident. 
whether something happened relating to them being pulled over hours earlier, whether it was someone who saw the couple and they did something that ended up pissing someone off for whatever reason. I really have no idea what could have happened that night, but I do know that there are a lot of things here to show that this may not have just been an accident. I personally think that whatever happened, maybe someone knocked on the door or Elliot went outside really quick after hearing something and something happened outside of that door. Maybe Elliot was hit as soon as he opened the door and then beaten more and then dragged and pushed off the balcony or something like that. I think it didn't happen in the room because I think Kimberly would have woken up if there was any sort of struggle. Maybe as soon as he opened the door, he was hit, hence the blood in the bathroom, and then he was dragged out. Maybe he was told to be quiet, maybe he was knocked unconscious immediately, and maybe that's why there was no sign of a struggle or any like loud commotion going on. With this case though, there is just such little information that it's impossible to say for sure what happened. I can't even really come up with a solid scenario because we really don't know enough. But with that, there are a lot of questions that I have that need to be answered if we want a better picture. Did the couple talk to anybody during their stay at any point? Did Elliot talk to anybody while Kimberly was doing something else? Did the two split up at any point that may have led Elliot to having a negative interaction with someone that Kimberly didn't know about? There are some times that people can do something without even realizing that really pissed someone off and this person is just seething and is upset because of whatever these people did to them that these people aren't even aware that they did. That's totally something that could have happened if someone just is not in the right state of mind or it could have something to do with them being pulled over and not having the cash that, you know, these officers wanted. So many things could have happened here and really it's up to the family and authorities to just keep fighting for answers, to figure out exactly what happened, to find other missing pieces of this puzzle, to put everything together, to figure out exactly what could have happened here. I really hope that the family is able to get surveillance footage from that night. I hope that their PI is able to come back with something because right now, now, I am so lost. I just want the family's questions answered and if someone is responsible for murdering Elliot, I want them held accountable. I think that it's possible in a lot of these cases where someone dies at a resort, a lot is done to cover it up because they don't want a bad name going out there. They don't want news articles about this man being murdered at their resort because they know that that's bad press and they know that people might not come there as much and they know that tourism might go down if they hear about this person being murdered at their hotel. So I think that's a big reason why we hear all of these stories with people dying and they just don't want anybody to think that it was a murder because then they might make a little bit less money for a time while people are thinking about this case. Or if the authorities are involved in some way, I personally don't know what I think of that theory. I don't want to go out there and say that, yeah, these two cops who pulled him over, for some reason they had this huge vendetta against Elliot and they followed him back to the resort and they knew what room he was in and they beat him because they only gave him $160. I don't know how realistic that is, but I will say that if Kimberly and Elliot drive a nicer car, if they wear nice clothes, if they appear to look very rich and well off, if these authorities thought that maybe they were skimmed out of some money from them, maybe they did follow them and they wanted more money because they looked rich to them. That's totally a possibility and it's something that I can see someone being targeted for, especially when they're on vacation. If someone's out there looking really nice and they look like they have a lot of money and with that, a lot of people on vacation always carry a lot of cash with them. So maybe the authorities went to his door looking to see if they had a safe and were looking to get more money from them and when Elliot was continuing to you know, argue with them and stand his ground, maybe that's when something happened. And if the authorities were involved in this, then I could see that that's why they don't want it investigated. Because again, unfortunately, it happens in a lot of cases where if a cop is responsible for some sort of crime, other cops in the station, other cops in the county will try to cover up for them and try to make it look like they didn't have anything to do with it because, you know, they're going to save each other before they admit to what they did in some cases. Not all of them, but in some cases. So those are just my thoughts about this case. 
again, I don't know what I think officially happened here, but I do think there are a lot of questions that need to be answered and a lot of very suspicious information that I could definitely see why people think that this was not just an accident. But either way, I am really looking forward to hearing what you guys think about this case. Do you think that this was just a tragic accident? Do you think the authorities are involved in this or do you think it was someone else at the resort or maybe a resort employee? Or do you think something else is going on here? Please let me know your thoughts and theories in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to go ahead and turn the notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Both will be linked down below. And if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to go ahead and fill out the Google form that I have listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time.